Ambulance, ambulance service to patient breathing. Hiya. Hiya. Could I have ambulance, Is please? The patient Pardon? Is the patient breathing? I can't hear you because that's shoot car. Is the patient breathing? I don't know. Yo, what's going on, people? It's your boy, Ape Hancho, back at you again with another video. And so this next one we're about to get into takes us over to Sunderland, where a man has recently been found guilty after a trial at Newcastle Crown Court for not only beating a man to death, but going that further twisted step to take as what's been described as a trophy picture of the man's body, which he wanted to share to social media to brag about what he had done. On the 2nd of June 2020, 32-year-old Wayne Miller finished work and went to buy alcohol and then went to his girlfriend Naomi's house. Wayne was said to have gotten on well with Naomi's mum, Vicky, and they found out she was round at Naomi's uncle's house by the name of Andrew Mather. Now, the thing was, Andrew and his brother Joseph, who was Naomi's father, didn't necessarily take a liking to Wayne. But either way, the pair would go round to Andrew's house, and at around 7.30pm, according to neighbours, they heard loud noises coming from the property. At around 9pm, Wayne and Naomi were seen on CCTV, walking away from the address, and Wayne is said to have been wearing shorts and tan boots at this point. Around 55 minutes later, Wayne is then picked up once again on CCTV returning to Aintree Road which of course is where Andrew's house is and this time he's wearing tracksuit bottoms, trainers and gloves. It was said that when Wayne went back to the address the second time he went on to murder Andrew which we'll get into the full details as we go through the court transcripts. The following morning though Wayne would make his way to a phone box and contact emergency services and this is what he would go on to tell them. Ambulance service to patient breathing. Hiya. Hiya. Could I have ambulance, Is please? Is the patient breathing? Pardon? Is the patient breathing? I can't hear you because that's a shoot car. Is the patient breathing? I don't know. Right, can you see them from where you are? No. I had a fight with him last night and I've knocked on the door and there's no answer and I'm worried about him. You had a fight with him last night and he's not answering the door? No. Nah. Okay. So you, when you say you had a fight with him, like physical or just...? No, he, he punched into his and I punched back into him. And I'm just worried. And it's me answer at the door. Right, so you've... I support you as in... Physically yeah. Um, when you, the last time you seen him, he was fine? Yeah, he was fine the last time I seen him. What's your name? William Miller. William Miller. Miller or Moore? Miller. Um, okay. M I W L E R. Okay. Um, what's the patient's name? What's his name? Andy. I don't know his second name, Andy. Second name. Right, okay. At around 5.45pm, Wayne would make his way to the local police station and hand himself in after becoming aware that he was now a wanted man. Although he wouldn't go on to agree that he murdered Andrew, rather that he killed him in self-defence. Either way, though, the police would in fact go on to charge Wayne with Andrew's murder, and a trial was to go ahead which started on the 2nd of December 2020. In court, Toby Headworth at QC said, Ladies and gentlemen, to say that the defendant was being economical with the truth is something of an understatement. He had beaten Mr Mather, the uncle of the defendant's girlfriend, in Mr Mather's own home, leaving him for dead, the previous evening. The intensity of his attack demonstrates, say the prosecution, that the defendant intended, at the least, to cause him really serious injury. The prosecution continued when the emergency services eventually went to Andrew's home on Aintree Road in Sunderland. They found his dead body naked, but he did have a pair of socks on, and he was located on his bedroom floor between the bed and the window. The prosecution said a post-mortem examination revealed he had suffered severe facial and head injuries and bleeding around the brain caused by blunt force trauma, likely to have been the result of punches, kicks and possibly stamps with the possible use of a weapon. They went on to say the defendant even took a trophy photograph of his work, subsequently deleting it. Relaying a small timeline of events to the court, it was heard that there'd been some quote-unquote ill will in Naomi's family between Naomi's father and uncle and her boyfriend Wayne, and would go on to say that this whole case could be pieced together by CCTV footage. The prosecution would go on to point out, though, that CCTV that was set up at Andrew's home 
had in fact been removed and they claim that this was stolen by Wayne as a way to cover his tracks. We've already gone over the timeline but again as a quick summary, at around 7.30pm neighbours are reported to hear loud screams and arguments at Andrew's house. It's believed at this point this is where the first fight took place. Wayne and Naomi are then seen leaving the address at around 9pm and then 55 minutes later Wayne is seen going back to Andrew's address. The prosecution said death was from the combined effects from blunt force trauma, suggesting blows with fists, kicks and or stamps, including an injury to his neck consistent with a stomp or kick. A picture was then shown to the jury of Andrew severely injured, but he wasn't dead at this point as the picture was taken from the first attack. The prosecution said the picture had since been deleted but was recovered, and describing the picture the prosecution said that it's unpleasant but necessary for the case. Adding, it's the body of injured Mr. Mather lying on the floor of the landing. Mr. Miller's, aka Wayne's, tan boot can be seen. It's a picture he had taken at the end of what he had done in the first visit. Was this a trophy photograph taken by the defendant to show himself as a hard man? The prosecution would ask. Adding that even if Wayne had reason to defend himself, which the prosecution did not accept that he did, that man in the photograph, by the time Wayne Miller had finished with him in the first visit, plainly was not in a position to offer any resistance to any further violence used on him. If that is correct, the violence meted out down the side of his bed in the second visit could have no justification and unfortunately it was to ensure that he was silenced. The jury was told that only injuries that were found on Wayne were on his fists. Now normally I wouldn't go over the injuries of a person in detail unless it needs to be pointed out and in this situation I need you guys to understand how bad the injuries really were and we have to remember Wayne did this with his bare hands is what's being said by the prosecution. We've gone over briefly what happened but home office pathologist Dr Louise Mulcaney outlined 28 areas of injury she found on Andrew's body while carrying out a post-mortem. Asked about a conclusion Dr Mulcaney told the court he had been subject to a sustained assault, likely comprising blows with fists, multiple kicks and or stamps to the face, head, neck, abdomen and back and possibly the use of a weapon which we've already spoke about before. Again, there were multiple separate impacts to the face and head causing severe facial fracturing and the traumatic loss of five teeth. An underlying traumatic injury to the brain resulted in respiratory compromise and death and Dr Mulcaney said that most of the injuries were to Andrew's head and neck and she said that she found 15 external head injuries including bruises, lacerations and a black eye. There were also fractures to the nasal bones, the bone around the eye, the side of the jaw, the upper jaw and there were two fractures to the cheekbone. Inside Andrew's mouth, the hard plate was fractured all the way round and had became separated and was quote unquote free floating. So for you guys who don't know what the hard palate is, it's pretty much the roof of your mouth I believe. So imagine Andrew was beaten up this badly that the roof of his mouth had became free floating. The pathologist also said that there was a fracture and bruising to the neck around the voice box and fractures to the voice box. The doctor also said that there had been substantial acceleration and deceleration to the head which could be expected explained by kicks to the head or a fall to the ground. Andrew's neck injuries were more in keeping with having been caused by a stamp or kick rather than strangulation according to the doctor. She would go on to say that no defensive injuries were found on Andrew consistent with him fending off an attack with his hand and arms. It was declared by her that he died due to his facial and head injuries which we spoke about previously and the doctor would add that there was bleeding around the brain and damage to the brain itself and there was just general brain swelling. The severe nature of the facial fractures would have caused upper airway compromise and the head injury is likely to have caused unconsciousness and significant impairment of breathing. Fractures and teeth loss would have caused bleeding leading to a collection of blood in Andrew's airways and lungs which would have further impeded his ability to breathe. She would go on to say death was due to a combined effect of these injuries. At a further court date Wayne Miller would take the stand to give evidence in his defence and in court it was heard that Wayne admitted having a substantial number of previous convictions and told jurors he couldn't read and struggles with complex language. The defence started off by asking Wayne why he took that picture of Andrew 
And he went on to say, I was going to put it on Facebook to tell everyone what I had done. Then they asked why he deleted it. And he said, because he knew that you couldn't put something like that on Facebook. So he changed his mind. He would go on to explain that he himself was aware that there were some bad feelings between himself and the two brothers, but said it was no concern of his. He would go on to say on that day, June 2nd, 2020, when he finished work, he went to buy alcohol and went to Naomi's house. And again, went to Andrew's house because Vicky, Naomi's mother was there. Apparently when they arrived, everything was fairly normal at that point and Wayne admitted he had forgotten about a previous incident where Andrew had actually asked Naomi, his niece, to sit on his knee which he said at the time he thought was weird and strange but again I just do want to point out that that isn't confirmed and this is all just alleged by Wayne. Wayne continued as time passed Andrew asked Naomi for a hug and claimed that he touched her buttocks. Wayne said Omi which is Naomi's nickname that he gave her got shook and then after he asked her to sit on his lap or his knee he went on to say after that i said i told omi no don't she didn't want to she looked shocked she told him i'm a bit too old to be sitting on your knee after that she moved away from him she came behind me and i told omi we're going home then andrew jumped up wanting to kiss omi she didn't want to i put my hand out and said whoa he started turning aggressive getting angry then he started punching into me Wayne would go on to explain he was hit three or four times to the head and then he started to fight back and punched him. He said that they both ended up on the floor fighting. Wayne said, I was trying to get him off me, punching him. When he stopped fighting back, I got off him. Now, I know we've already spoke about the picture, but there was in fact two pictures that were taken by Wayne. One of them was described as being taken at 7.53 p.m. and showed Naomi's mother laying on the bed with her eyes closed with Andrew in the background, sitting on the edge of the bed with his head in his hands. The second one was taken at 8.49 p.m. and showed Andrew injured with damage to his face, which was bloodstained, of course. We've gone over that one in detail. Wayne said he remembered taking it at the top of the landing. Andrew had apparently moved after the picture was taken according to Wayne and his eyes were open he said he was breathing when him and Naomi left the house and he said he put him in a recovery position in regards to Andrew's CCTV system he said that he stole it when he left saying that he just panicked and the reason he went back the second time was to get Naomi's mum just in case Andrew was angry and took it out on her Wayne was asked why he didn't mention going back to Andrew's house in his defense statement and he said it was because Andrew's body was naked when he discovered it and was worried about what people in prison would think of him because it might have looked as if something sexual had happened. According to Wayne, when he went back, Andrew was no longer where he had left him and he was now at the end of the bed, fuming and still bleeding and he claimed that Andrew had attacked him again and said he kicked him once in the face after he grabbed his foot. Wayne said Andrew started to kick out and he grabbed him to which his shorts came sliding off and he wasn't wearing anything else. It was apparently the next morning that he and Vicky, Naomi's mum went to check if Andrew was all right and when Vicky eventually went inside she found Andrew dead. To this Wayne made that 999 call which you heard at the start of the video and after a six day trial at Newcastle Crown Court Wayne would go on to be found guilty of Andrew's murder and he's due to be sentenced on the 15th of December 2020 and the brief statement that we've got from the judge from reports all it says is that Wayne will be receiving a life sentence and of course the minimum term will be getting decided on that date. So all the videos that I've done up to date, I've got to admit that this one is up there when it comes to how shocking and how violent this crime actually was. I'd only say that maybe a couple top it, but even then, this would still be on par with it. What actually got me personally was how broken Andrew actually was when the emergency services found him. So he must have gone through a really traumatic experience, unfortunately leading up to his death. Now, we'll never truly know what happened between Wayne and Andrew because from reports that I've collected, I didn't see any witness statements come from anybody else. So, so I couldn't really say what their standpoint was. But again, from reports, there's nothing to say that anybody backed up the claim that Andrew went on to touch his niece inappropriately. But I do want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to Andrew because, again, at the end of the day, this man went through a terrible experience. But let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. Give the video a little like. And if you want the latest drill, street and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy, Ape Hancho, and I'm out.